The thing we're going to be talking about is vocabulary. I want to make sure that you're using the right words when you're talking about these things. And the definition of those words are going to change depending on the context we're talking about. But isn't that all ratios is? It's the meaning of the number changes as the situation changes. And that's why this unit's going to get kind of tricky and we have to keep our vocabulary straight. And you know me, I got to start with ratios in real life and I got to give you a context for it. One interesting thing to think about with ratios is money. When a small child tells me they have $25, that's a lot of money. When an adult tells me they have $25, that's a very desperate situation. Understanding ratios and how much adults should be making helps you understand that situation a little more. So let's talk about the minimum wage. The minimum wage is the lowest amount the law lets you pay somebody who works for you. When I started working in 1997, the minimum wage was $5.75 in California. That means I worked for an hour and I was paid about $5. So if I worked for eight hours, a full day of work, that means at the end of the day, I had $40. Now that was about 20 years ago and the prices of things have gone up. So should minimum wage go up also? Politicians are always talking about raising the minimum wage and there's a lot of controversy around it. But you can't even understand that issue until you understand ratios. So let's compare the ratio of the pay of two different stores. Let's compare the dollar store wage to the Costco wage. And the ratio of those two places is $8 an hour and $14 an hour. So I would say the ratio is 8 to 14. Take a look at this chart and you can notice that there's definitely a difference between the dollar store and Costco. But using this chart, you can kind of see how that compares to other stores. So I don't know about you, but if I was working at Dollar General, I'd be filling out an application for Costco. Today's objective is to get you using the vocabulary words associated with ratios. There are equations and expressions that we're going to be talking about, and we're going to be using those equations to talk about different quantities. So let's start off with just a picture. I want you to figure out if this picture has a ratio of 4 to 1. That means are the green squares to the blue squares, oh, I'm sorry, I have to use the right vocabulary, are the green quadrilaterals in the ratio of four to one to the blue quadrilaterals? And the easiest way to count is just go one, two, three, four, switch. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. So let's just do that together. One, two, three, four, switch. One. One, two, three, four, switch. One. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. And now I'm out of green. So it's almost a ratio of four to one, but I ran out of green and I have too much blue. So let's try with a different one. On this picture, is there something that's in a ratio of four to one? Do you think it's purple to white is four to one? Or purple to orange? I'm going to count purple to white and let's see. One, two, three, four. One. One, two, three, four. One. Purple, 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 purple. White. And once again, I ran out. So I'm almost in a ratio of four to one with purple to white, but not quite. I'm going to give you a piece of paper that has 24 squares marked off on it. And I want you to try to draw a ratio of four to one. But first, watch me. One, two, three, four. Switch color. And color in one. One, two, three, four. Switch color and color in one. So far, I got a ratio of four to one. Let me keep going. One, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four. Mm, almost. So I want you to pick your two favorite colors and see if you can make a design with four to one. And if you're very, very clever, you can probably figure out why I picked 24 and 4 and 1. So pause the video now, get yourself some crayons, and see if you can color 24 things with a ratio of 4 to 1. Did you see something interesting between the 24 and that ratio I gave you? Isn't it like doing 24 divided by 5? Did you notice I can't do it evenly? 
Well, actually, you can do it evenly. You just have to get a little bit clever. There's four to one. There's four to one. One, two, three, four, one. And that's where I'm going to start to get a little creative. I didn't say you had to color each square in completely. I only said you had to color the whole thing with a ratio of four to one. So if I make four green bars and one purple bar and I fill them in, then I have done exactly that. The ratio still stands. Now I'm going to have to even that out a little better like this. There you go. That's better. If my ratio is four to one, that means I've colored in four green bars and one purple bar in each square. So the purple bar is actually one out of five. The purple bar is one fifth. It takes five of these purple bars to make one whole purple square. So I'm going to have to count them that way eventually. Let me finish coloring my chart first. Now I have colored in completely 24 things with a ratio of 4 to 1. If the ratio is 4 to 1 with 24 things, how many squares are actually purple? Let me count the purple squares. One, two, three. If I have colored in four green bars and one purple bar in each square, the purple bar is actually one out of five. So the purple bar is one fifth. So if I count five purple bars, one, two, three, four, five, then I'll have one more purple square. So, so far the answer is four purple squares, but you see I got some left over. One, two, three, four, and four fifths. If the ratio is one fourth to, with 24 things, how many squares are purple? The ratio is four to one. There's 24 things. Four and four fifths squares are purple. I could write that equation like this. Purple plus green is going to give me 24. And I kind of know using this equation how much purple is. So I could rewrite it like this. Four and four fifths plus the green will give me 24. I bet you're clever enough to figure out how much the green is. Now I want you to try to make a ratio of three to two with 24 squares. And you're gonna notice that three to two also makes five, just like four to one makes five. I want you to pick two different colors and count one, two, three, and switch and color one, two. We're gonna end up with some very creative drawings. So pause here and work on that for a bit. I want to see how creative you can get. I know everyone's art is gonna look different based on how they wanted to make it. So start thinking about how four to one and one to four look the same, and how three to two and two to three look the same, and how those numbers all relate to 24, and how they all relate to six, and how they all relate to four. That's it for today. Don't go heavy nightmares about Megalodon or Quetzalcoatlus. I just want you to know that this is the beginning of working with ratios and it's really going to help you as we get deeper and deeper into understanding how things are compared to other things.